And with me now is Rebecca Eaton, executive producer of Masterpiece. Rebecca, welcome. It's a pleasure to have Thank you here. You. Let me start where you start your book, your confession that yes, initially you truth. turned down. Yes, I did. Downton Abbey when was for that deal. What? I, I did feel the need. I had to tell the truth. Yes, <laughs> I did turn it down. Uh, they called me. They said, we have this really interesting show, an aristocratic family, beautiful country estate, marriageable young girls, money, life, death. And I said, it sounds good, but we're about to do the new upstairs, downstairs. We had a very full plate. Maybe not. And uh, I must be the luckiest woman in show business because <laughs> it went around the circle of other American television executives to co-produce and nobody picked it up. And I woke up and realized... What made when, you wake up? Maggie Smith. Uh -huh. I heard Maggie Smith had been cast. She's one of my very, very favorite actresses. And Elizabeth McGovern, who plays Cora, mm -hmm. called and said she had just been at the table read, the, the read through, the whole cast gets together. And she said, this is, this is going to be really special. So I picked up the phone and called and said, is it still available? And, but I still didn't know it was going to be the phenomenon it is. Anybody who reads your book will know that you were born to be the executive producer of Masterpiece Theater, but you really didn't want the job at the no, beginning. I didn't want the Explain job. Explain that. Uh, you know the John Le Carre book, The Spy Who Came In From The Cold? Yeah. I thought I was a producer then. I was making documentaries. I had just worked on a feature film. And I thought to do Masterpiece, to be the executive producer of Masterpiece, was a desk job. It wasn't really making anything. How is it different than what you expected? Well, I thought it would be easy, first of all, <laughs> because these brilliant productions are made in England. Right. They are not produced here in the States. They're made at the BBC, the independent companies. So I thought my job would be just watching television all day and say, I'll take that one, I won't take that yeah. one, I'll take that one which is kind of how it was in the beginning when Masterpiece was born, Masterpiece Theatre, as it was then in 1971. My predecessor would go to London and watch the tapes of these shows till her eyeballs were spinning mm -hmm. freely in her head. And as soon as I took the job, Masterpiece was 15 years old and almost immediately, this is the year after The Jewel in the Crown, things changed drastically. The British started needing partners to really co-produce, so they needed people to take the risk with them, to come in before the shows were made, to come in on the basis of scripts or ideas or just pitches. So I had to start working a little harder that way to, you know, to, you know, really, really understand what a what it takes. So determining to what would be produced. Yeah, yeah, and what would make it from the page to the stage, right. as the saying goes. Then the other thing that got harder is that mobile who had underwritten Masterpieces in 1971 to the tune of a quarter of a billion dollars, wow. withdrew. Wow. Exxon mo bought mobile, and then we lost the funders. So all of a sudden, we had much less money. PBS did support us through those thin times. Uh, we had to take more risks, and the British stopped making as many costume dramas, right. frock dramas. And so the pipeline sort of dried up. Um, and it got kind of tough. Well, let me do as you do in your book, come back to Downton Abbey. What's the secret of that program? What's the secret to it? If I knew <laughs> the secret to it, I would not tell you on <laughs> television. Uh, I think none of us know. We all have our theories. Um, it might have to do with the times that we live in. Times are tough, times are hard. It looked like in those times, even though they were tough, World War I, you know, the Titanic going down, that these people were enduring, prevailing, and they were in this house, in this beautiful country house. They are a community that supports each other and sees each other through. And I think it's very good-hearted. My particular theory is it's very good-hearted, but let's not forget the frocks and the beautiful young people, the actors, uh, the, who play the younger people, and the, the solid gold senior British stars like Maggie Smith and Penelope Wilton and Hugh Bonneville, Jim Carter, who play the the older people. So you have a favorite character? I do. Tell us what I, sh I shouldn't. Come on. I'll just tell you, but yeah, I won't me, yeah, tell, yeah. tell them. <laughs> um, my two favorites are, uh, I have to say, Sophie McShira, who plays Daisy. Interesting. And Rob James Collier, who plays Evil Thomas. And who's going to die on the show this season? Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you really want me to lose my job, apparently. Um, okay, I guess you're I, not. I can't possibly comment. 
So finally, Rebecca, why did you write uh, this book? Was it your swan song? Are you bidding farewell to Masterpiece you know, and to the rest I of us? I thought I was. I had been doing this show for 27 years, and Masterpiece was 42 years old. And they asked me to write a personal memoir, a working woman, you know, at the end of the 20th century, beginning of the 21st, raising a family. How do you do that, being a woman executive? And they wanted me to write Masterpiece's memoir, and I really didn't want to do it. I wasn't <laughs> comfortable stepping out in front of the curtain. But as I started to write it and interview Kenneth Branagh, Eileen Atkins, Daniel Radcliffe, and remember how much I love these people, how much I love this programming, and how much the show, Masterpiece, has meant to so many families, uh, I thought, oh, wait a minute, I have the best job in television. Yeah. Why, why would I retire? Why would I? So I am, I'm completely back in the saddle as yeah, a result of that. That's writing. good news. That's good news. Well, Rebecca, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ralph.